Okay guys, before we get into the actual coding, I thought it'd be helpful to talk a little bit about what a cellular automata is, and mathematically speaking, and how it was developed. So automata actually comes from the Greek word for self-making, um, which is actually why I've chosen the particular automata arrangement that we'll see later. So a cellular automaton refers to a zero-player game in which this case consists of a number of squares, each allocated a binary value of one or zero. The system evolves according to a discrete set of rules relating the new state of a cell to the previous state of its neighbouring cells. The game of life is a specific set of automata rules discovered by John Conway in 1970. Conway aimed to create a set of rules that gave the following results. The first is that there should be no explosive growth. The second, there should exist small initial patterns with chaotic and unpredictable outcomes. Three, there should be potential for von Neumann universal constructors implying that any process that can be algorithmically produced can also be done within the game of life, theoretically speaking. The rule should be as simple as possible, while adhering to the above constraints. Conroy found that the set of automata rules met all the criteria for his goal. These are the rules that we're going to program today. The first of which is any live cell with fewer than two li live neighbours dies, as if by overpopulation. Any live cell with two or three live neighbours lives on to the next generation. Any live cell with more than three live neighbours dies, as if by overpopulation. And finally, any dead cell with exactly three live neighbours becomes a live cell, as if by reproduction. The game of life provides a simple yet stunning example of emerging complexity in a simple system, implying that lifelike behaviour is found at every level of analysis in the natural world, right down to purely mathematical structures. Okay, so before we start writing a function that's going to take in our n by n array of ones and zeros and then update this um, based on the rules of life, we're going to need a few modules to start with. We're going to need NumPy, so which, which makes our maths operations easier. We're also going to need a map, matplot.lib um, to plot with. You'll also need FFmpeg, especially if you're using Jupyter Notebook. This can be a bit difficult to um, uh, get as you have to define a file path on your computer, but there's lots of um, information out there on the internet to help you do that. Um, and we'll also need the Python display um, HTML, mo HTML module to actually create our animation. So first thing we're going to do is um, load our data, and this is just from a plain text file, again of ones and zeros, called that I've called Gospel for Gospel's Glider Gun. And that's my favourite starting arrangement. And we're just going to show this in the using the C map, um, and so this is going to be in the form that we actually animate it in. As you can see, this is the first frame of our cellular automaton, if you like. So now we start making our tick function. We're just going to take in our n by n matrix. Um, so we're going to define the new state, which is what it's going to put out, and this is going to be the same size as our input matrix. We now need to make a nested loop, which is going to loop over the columns and then the rows of our matrix. You see the mpa.size function is taking our input matrix and defining a 1 or a 0 if it's talking about a column or a row. So within that nested loop, we're now going to define um, the neighbours of each cell. So this... Um, I'm going to, I defined it as the north, south, east, west, and then you have the uh, ones diagonally away from the cell in question. So, as I said before, we now need to define our neighbours. Um, and to do this, we're going to do a north, south, east, west, south, east, south, west, north, east, and north, west <laughs> position. And that's going to give us all eight surrounding neighbour cells um, for any given cell. What we're also going to do is add on um, what's called edge conditions. And so this is if a cell um, does not have a complete set of neighbours, such as it would be um, if it was on the edge of, the, of our data grid. Um, we want to say presume that this neighbour value is zero, so it's not going to um, affect the rest of the cells. And you can see that we're defining um, well, we're creating an if statement using um, an index value, which is um, it's going to be given by the position of the cell in question as we're iterating each each cell in the grid effectively. And we want to say that um, if that 
is in a position that is um, two less than the size of the matrix than it is um, an edge cell. And so we need to treat it slightly differently. So once we have all of these written down, we want to create a list um, or a sum rather that's going to take in a value from each of these neighbors and decide how many cells are alive or dead. And once we've done that, we can start um, creating our rules for the game of life. So we're saying here, if a given cell within the matrix is equal to zero and the sum of its neighbors is three, so that means one of the um, neighbor conditions or three of any of the neighbor conditions are equal are equal to one and so sum to three and so we're going to define a new state um, to be one there as if by reproduction um, next we want to say take a live cell and say if it has less than two neighbors it dies as I by underpopulation and the next rule we say we take a live cell that has above three neighbors and, and then we define this to be overpopulated and the new state becomes a dead cell. OK, and also if we have a live cell with exactly two neighbours and um, this survives. And the same could be said for um, any, cell, any live cell with three neighbours, as um, we spoke about previously, as two or three will ensure that the cell survives on to the next generation. And so here we have our main tick function, which will, as I said, evolve our data input one generation. OK, so what we're going to want to do now is start um, creating an animation using this tick function. So we're going to define a new function called animation artist, which is going to take in a number of frames, a time interval between those frames and then a starting data set, which, of course, in this case, would be the glider gun. Now we're creating an empty list for our images to go in and now we're looping over um, the number of frames that we want to produce so this is going to be the number of generations and essentially how long of an animation we want to create and note that I'm using the im show again because we want this to be a form that can be animated um, and so we're also writing animated equals true there and next what we want to do is create a list of the images which we can then sew together to create the animation but it's also very important to update our matrix using matrix equals tip matrix um, so that we're now putting the new updated matrix back into the function we're not just evolving the first one okay and finally you want to call the animation although it seems we have a bug here okay so i'm going to do a little bit of debugging now and I found that that should be im instead of ims because we want to append each individual image um, to our list of images called ims. OK, so the output we're currently getting um, tells me that there's something wrong with our loops um, in our tick function. In this case, it's an indentation error. We weren't looping over both the rows and the columns. Um, so now we're going to recall animate artist and see if this works now. Yeah, and there you have it, Gospel's Glider Gun.